Everybody stand back, move aside. New guy coming through. <laughs> oh, my goodness, I'll tell you what. Have you ever been so thrilled about something in your life that uh, you just almost find yourself a little speechless? Which really is not a good thing when you're doing a talk show in the, the radio world. But that's where I am today. Chuck Douglas in for Dirk Thompson. The uh, Radio Deli temporarily shut down for the weekend. I think they found something in the chicken salad. A little cleanup's going on. Dirk will be back with you next weekend. Uh, so I'm sitting in today and uh, absolutely thrilled. You know, right now, at this moment in time, my my uh, my posterior is, is where that of John Corby was just 24 hours ago. And I, I'm thrilled. I am ecstatic about the fact that I am sitting in this room. Uh, just been here at 610 WTVN a few days and uh, been doing some traffic. You might have caught me there working with uh, Corporal Craig Sinclair during the week doing traffic. And this opportunity came up and I said, sure, why not? Something I'd love to do. Program director Bruce Collins called me up. He said, well, you know, you scare me a little bit, but I think we're going to give this a shot. And I said, okay, thank you very much. I went out in the hall, jumped up and down like a child. Uh, considering my girth, I did do some damage to the hall, but Clear Channel has insurance, so I guess that's okay. And uh, I'm just giddy, absolutely giddy about being here. So thank you very much to everyone who pushed all the appropriate buttons and got me on. Uh, my producer, don't really even know him. What? What? Hold up a side. Can you talk to me? Can you tell me what's your name? And uh, you're Chad. Bless your heart for being here today, Chad. I appreciate that. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, aside from the fact that I've been doing traffic here for uh, a couple of weeks with Craig. Uh, about two decades behind the microphone in one way, shape, or form. Not nearly as much fun as uh, what I've had here in just this very short time. A few things I want to tell you about this radio station. First of all, one of the most glorious discoveries that I made when I came in the door here is that Larry Larson, Mr. High School Sports, is in person just as nice as he is on the radio. What a great guy. Larry Larson is just a wonderful human being. And I just I wanted to say that publicly because, you know, you get those voices behind the uh, the mic. You don't know who they are or what they're really like. And I, I walked in the door kind of thinking, okay, well, who's going to be how and what, how are they? Get? Such a gentleman. So just a pleasure to meet him. I've uh, been in radio for about two decades, as I said, and uh, have enjoyed it. This business has changed so very, very much over the years that uh, there are some who uh, who think it's just not worth it anymore. But once it gets in your blood, like they say about printers, ink, for those people that were in the print industry or the newspaper industry, it gets in your blood. It becomes part of you. It's really something that uh, that you love. And this is a line of work that I just absolutely love and thrilled to be back, uh, back doing this for a living, sitting behind a microphone. Other things that uh, are important to me, of course, Columbus, Ohio. This is my hometown, born and raised here. I've had about all of the uh, the blizzard talk I think I can take. Uh, in 1978, I was a paper boy. I was one of few, I think that was the first time I was in the newspaper, actually, because I was one of the few carriers that actually got my uh, paper route delivered that day. And uh, the dispatch, you know, acknowledged everyone who managed to get the papers delivered. It was an afternoon paper back then, so it wasn't uh, quite as terrible as having to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to go out and throw newspapers, but still, it was challenging. I wonder, though, if today's weather forecasting, and I take nothing away from, uh, you know, our Doppler 10 meteorologists do a fine job. Their accuracy is there. If I need to know what's going to happen Tuesday morning when I'm leaving the house, you get Chris Bradley on the line, you get Mike Davis on the line, you get Brandon Rue on the They'll tell you. They know they're, they're good at being accurate, and I appreciate that. However, in the, especially the spring and summer months when weather gets a little treacherous around central Ohio, I wonder if the phone interviews on the television news with the guy in the trailer aren't going a little far. Sometimes I wonder, are we overreacting to this? And is that overreaction today because of the blizzard of 1978? Are we so, so, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? I don't want to say scared, but I guess scared is kind of what it's about. Scared of what the weather is going to bring that we overreact these days. So we've been talking about this uh, 30-year anniversary of the blizzard of 78 for the past few days. Fine with me if you're still into that, and uh, if you'd like to share a memory or two, I guess we could do that at 821-986, 821-WTVN. Outside of the local dialing area, it's uh, 1-800-610-WTVN. Also, kind of on the uh, the last nerve, the presidential campaign politics. I know, we got a long way to go. November, before the election gets here. But man, do you feel like we should be there already? I mean, we've had primary after primary already. It just seems like we should be so much closer to the November election than where we are. Another 10 months down the road. The Ohio primary in March looking like it's going to be a little more important than maybe we thought it was going to be early on. 
last night, of course, uh, what happened in South Carolina with the Democratic primary, I think surprised more than a few people. I don't think the, the, the win surprised people. I think the margin of the win really, really surprised people. The two-to-one margin, that was pretty impressive for the uh, Obama campaign. I am probably more entrenched in what happens locally. Believe it or not, I, I realize you haven't heard a whole heck of a lot about it, but we'll be voting on some stuff here in Columbus, Ohio, as well, come November. We'll be making some decisions, electing some people, and doing things like that on a local level. Might affect you a little bit more. And I got to thinking yesterday, what if you could wave a wand? You know, just wave a wand and change something about Columbus, Ohio, about life in Columbus, Ohio, to make it more pleasant, to make it more tolerable, to make it just a better experience for you. If you could wave the wand and change one thing, what would it be? Personally, I'd change the, uh, the structure of what we have uh, in government. Not necessarily the people as, you know, not just a big fail swoop and get rid of everyone, but, but change the structure. Ohio, 1803, we're given credit with becoming a state in 1803. In 1914, we adopted the city charter for the city of Columbus. Now, if my recollection of history is correct, that charter allowed for a seven-person city council. Today.